We're in Denver, Colorado at Intercom's 19th Annual Oil and Gas Conference. I have the pleasure of welcoming Dr. Will Fleckenstein from the Colorado School of Mines. He's the Interim Department Head in the Petroleum Engineering Department. Good morning. Good morning. There's been a lot of discussion at the conference about fracks and completion technologies. Can you talk about reservoir optimization? What does that mean and how do companies do this? Well, you know, so right now you have unconventional and conventional reservoirs. It, and we've been producing from conventional reservoirs since 1859. However, we've now just started to scratch the surface of these unconventional reservoirs, so they're very different. Uh, you know, so we've gotten very good at producing a lot of oil and gas from conventional reservoirs. Right now, when we look at a convention, or unconventional reservoir, shale reservoir, the recovery factors are very low. And, and so we're constantly trying to improve the completions, and you hear a lot about that at the Intercom conference, about how people are getting more and more oil and gas as they go to better understanding of the completions, better propping patterns, more fracks, better systems for fluids, et cetera. What is on the bleeding edge in the reservoir optimization field, in your opinion? Well, you know, so it's better hydraulic fractures. It's understanding the hydraulic fractures and, and how fluid moves into them. And that really is the bleeding edge, getting better completions. Is the conventional vertical well a dinosaur? You know, the conventional reservoir is moving farther offshore. Uh, so, you know, you have these undiscovered reservoirs in deep water that have never been tapped. But when you look onshore in the United States, for instance, most of those conventional reservoirs are almost too small now to produce. So that's why in the United States, probably 70 to 80% of the wells being drilled are unconventional. Could you talk about the length and size of a frack in the reservoir? You know, sure, so, so, so we're looking now to longer laterals, and so you have a lateral that's up to two miles long, and the fracture could extend a couple hundred feet to a couple thousand feet laterally away from that uh, horizontal well. Dr. Fleckenstein, what's next after the shale boom? Well, you know, this shale boom's gonna last for a long time. Uh, you know, there are so many smaller shales that people are now starting to develop. Primarily, we've produced the Eagleford. Uh, now we're into the Permian Basin. We've had the Marcellus. And now you start to hear about these smaller shales, such as the Mancos that you're seeing up in Colorado here. And, and so what's next is we're going to apply this technology to smaller and more technically complex reservoirs, which means we have a very large amount of hydrocarbons for these unconventionals to produce. Is the Colorado School of Mines graduating petroleum engineers and the numbers the industry needs? How much, how many do you expect to graduate this coming year? So we have 190 seniors. We have about 220 juniors in the pipeline. And the total number of registered petroleum engineering majors we have would be about 750. Now, you compare that to 10 years ago, we were graduating around 30 students. Uh, each year in petroleum engineering. So we've had a tremendous uptick and it's being driven by demand. Last year we had about a 97% placement rate for all of our petroleum engineering graduates. What else do would you like to share with our viewers? Well, you know, the economics are very, very good for this since having a big impact of, of, across the country, as people have heard. I'm also involved in a National Science Foundation project to look at the sustainability of natural gas. And, and, and so what we're looking at is the probabilities, the risks associated with natural gas development and, and coming up with hard numbers to understand exactly what are the risks to the aquifers and, and to the emissions. And, and, and I think most people now would agree there's very little, almost no chance that we're hydraulically fracturing into aquifers. The concern now is moving towards emissions. Some great insight. We definitely appreciate your time here. Thank you so very much for the opportunity. I'm Quinn Nguyen for oilandgas360.com.